stay-at-home dad Watching Disney movies he never had His daughter digs through all the VHS Crushing the classics in a princess dress Informed like Scuttle, Kurt's got your ticket Making it real like Jiminy Cricket Most are off the Captain Hook, but if the Tweedle dumb He'll be taking more shots than Bambi's mom Leave some rays like Simba, or crack like the Beast dishes He'll show you a whole new world You won't need free wish Stay at home This is super fitting, as my daughter and I just went to Disneyland for the very first time, and I think the Rescue Rangers roller coaster, whatever it's called, was her favorite ride of all. So let's press play. This is just another collection of a couple uh, episodes of the TV show. They're always fun. Adventures in Squirrel Sitting. Is that a reference to Adventures in Babysitting, the best Thor movie ever made? We start with a robbery in progress. The Rangers are after Fat Cat, who is on a rickshaw. And he still gets away. I would not hire the Rescue Rangers. Uh, the heroes did get back the stolen artifact, though. They return it to the museum. It's the Maltese Mouse, but it looks like one of the peanut butter bears. Oh, no, Fat Cat has kidnapped some kids, and he's going to drop them to their deaths unless the museum hands the statue back over to him. And in the scene that the Dark Knight definitely stole from Chip and Dale, they're like, okay, let him go. And he's like, bad choice of words. Uh, the Rangers wreck this house to save the kids. And this ungrateful mom, who is, she's a super bitch, and she's mad that they made a mess while saving her kids' lives, and she bullies the rangers into, like, babysitting, like, take the kids and get them out of the house while I clean and entertain. The oldest daughter is in love with Chip, and he tries to credit Gadget for the rescue, and she doesn't want to hear that. She tells Chip to show her everything. Wow. She uh, continues, I'm sure you have so much more exciting things to show me than Gadget's smelly old workshop. Is she talking about his... I was gonna say scrapbook of old cases. And then his... The youngest child happens to get into some airplane invention and flies away and they have to rescue her. The Aussie gets a plunger stuck on his head and I'm fascinated to think what Australians call plungers. Now Chip tears into the teenager that had a crush on him. You are not a rescue ranger and he makes her cry. Well done. Oh man. So this is Cammy. Is that the teenager? She's been a total gadget to undermine her and get all of Chip's attention like she has been super mean and rude to Gadget as competition but as soon as Chip tells off Cammy, Gadget's like you made her cry you old man she obviously has a crush on you look sisters sticking together I like it some writer with women issues is projecting hard in this episode I missed whatever happened next I was looking down and writing but the kids have been kidnapped again or they tried to sneak into the underground casino run by fat cat but now the rescue rangers are going undercover to fat cat's underground gambling facility as the entertainment chip and dale dress in drag and I love how this wasn't a thing anyone blinked at back in the 80s and 90s not like today so Chip and Dale have like fake breasts and they're doing a sexy dance number for Fat Cat Gadget comes to save Cammy and Cammy's like no I'm gonna show Chip that I'm better than you and Gadget's like Chip is a loser and I don't want him I am not your competition oh that doesn't feel good now everyone including Fat Cat is singing about the Fat Cat Casino and the song Sounds exactly like our local Dakota Dunes Casino jingle, which is a total glitch, glitch in the Matrix. Honestly, it's the same tune. Like, the jingle is so close. And I realize I'm the only person in the world that would catch this because it's a local commercial. But anyway, Fat Cat figures it out and captures all the rangers and the two kids. He's cutting a promo and he explains how he's going to round up the rescue rangers, add filler, and can them as cat food. There's a lot of darkness in this movie that's pretty bleak the kids actually have skills and they're gonna make the save so i guess now chip has to bang the teenager if she saves him. no the kids immediately bumble it and get tossed into the stew with the rangers cammy comes up with an idea she makes a rope out of chip and dale's clothes and they use it to climb out of the puree machine that fly thing comes and hovers in between the two bad guys who wind up and they obviously miss the fly and punch each other but as soon as they go to punch each other we cut away to a fat cat reacting like wincing because i guess we can't show the two of them punching each other on 
TV, I guess. Uh, the Golden Mouse statue thing falls into the machine, so they hit the emergency stop. The Rangers get out and toss the artifact back in and start the machine. Take that museum artifact that did nothing wrong. No, Monterey saves it. The bad guy gets canned, but they're alive but canned. They drop the kids back off and they say they weren't any trouble. There you go, b mom. Uh, Cammy forces herself on Chip, who does not want her sexual advances because she's a child, but everyone laughs. So it's okay, let's go to credit. Uh, credits. Up next, three men and a booby. And the show starts with Chip and Dale hiding in a grocery store and the owner says, nuts! They never stay put. Is this episode just going to be like a double entendre checklist? The grocer is now chasing a bird who laid her egg and a carton in the store. Probably the worst place ever to lay an egg. Some good animation as they slide through the floor or through people's legs. Uh, they make it outside with the bird. The bird is Mrs. Booby. Everyone is safe and we get the Booby flashback. She laid an egg and then a plane came and picked up her egg. What? The rangers are like, we have an egg to rescue, my daughter says. I think they, too, they, I think they do too much rescuing. Oh. Okay, she was just in the supermarket looking for her egg. All right, there's some cool dude hawks that I think are supposed to be the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I, I love these characters. <laughs> Can we make a new Disney movie with all these awesome B and C characters nobody, nobody remembers? Like, I want these two and the African-American mermaid and Monstro. Oh, the adventures those throwaway characters would have together. Oh, okay, there's a bad guy who's collecting rare eggs. He's like Quasimodo, and I'm actually... I'm actually getting into this episode. He has a shrine with all these bird types and their eggs next to them. This is good stuff. He places his new egg in the showcase. Booby tries to get her egg back. An alarm goes off. The jig is up. It's chaos. And the rangers are busted and they try to escape with the egg. We get that weird Chinese riff for some reason. Dun, 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 or whatever. Not cool. Uh, they escape with the egg, but the collector doesn't care because he captured the actual bird who can lay eggs over and over. And I guess we are supposed to feel bad for her, but you know... Are the Hawks bad guys? The Rangers escape the Hawks and get back, but now they don't know how they're going to get past the Hawks when they go back to save Booby. Gadget needs to build something, so the idiot guys have to look after the egg, and it's Bumbler O'Clock! This has turned into, like, grade 9 sex ed when they make you look after an egg for a week as if it's your child, remember that? The egg pops feet out and goes for a walk, then fully hatches. The Aussie says he doesn't know what boobies eat! We are on a side quest now, and they're trying to find uh, bugs while the writers and animators are trying to find filler to stretch this one to 22 minutes. Ozzy says raising a booby is no problem at all. An Easter basket is delivered to the egg collector. He doesn't want to spoil his supper, which is three different kinds of eggs. That's pretty funny. Uh, the rangers are hiding in the Trojan horse basket and they rescue booby from the cage with its child. Baby of mine. They get the cage open just as the Eggman returns, and it's chaos again. Uh, they fire jelly beans out of a catapult and escape, but he calls the Hawks. Oh, okay, the Hawks work for this Eggman. They come after the Rangers. Inside the kitchen is a hundred. Is inside the kitchen is hundreds of eggs, but those are for eating and not other people's kids, like the ones in the trophy room. So they don't care. The egg crates tip and break, and my kid says, "Good, those weren't chicken eggs." Uh, the Hawks get sucked into a vacuum. The Eggman says he can get another booby, but the rest of them aren't getting out of the house alive. The little bug turns up and heats. To the little bug turns up to heat in the house and all the eggs hatch. That's wonderful. Did not see that's coming. That's actually really fun. All the chaotic birds escape along with the rangers uh, who proclaim they have a couple of boobies to get home. For real. The birds ask how they feel about booby sitting and that's that bass heavy music extra with credits for each show. Which is bizarre, because obviously this was two episodes of the TV show, but instead of playing the first set of credits after the first episode, they played both sets of credits back-to-back -back after the second episode. I guess they thought people would think the tape is over if they ran credits after the first episode. You know what? People definitely would have thought the tape was over if they ran credits after the first episode, but it's still f***ing weird. That's what I think about. What do you think? What we have is a concern about Curtis Anderson. His interviewing style is not the best. His personal appearance is not the best. I was wondering if the man has some kind of a hold over the channel that uh, he's allowed to be employed for so long. 